Blackmagic Design just released the newest version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 17.4. And this splash screen here shows you some of the updates. I'm not going to cover each one of these in this video, but I do want to show you a couple that I found interesting. In previous versions of Resolve, if you had a Fusion file or a video file on top of another video file in your timeline and you wanted to composite it, you would have to choose the mode and then it would show you what's happening between the two different files. But in version 17.4, all you have to do is come up to the composite section and as we scroll down the list, it reflects the different modes within our viewer. Here we're looking at a previous version of DaVinci Resolve. We can take a shape transition, throw it on our timeline, and if we check the inspector, these are the options that we have. In the 17.4 release, if we apply a shape transition, now we have this new aspect ratio option, and you can see what effect that has here. Again, just for reference in a previous version of DaVinci Resolve, if we right click and choose render in place, these are the options that we have. In the new 17.4 version, if we right click and choose render in place, we now have this additional option and that's include color grading effects. And now for what I think is one of the more exciting updates and that's the 3D keyer. Right here, we're looking at an older version again of DaVinci Resolve. I've applied the effect. These are the options that we have here on the right hand side. And there's also a second button to click on here to show more options. But this effect actually corresponds to something that we have on the bottom of the screen. If I come down to the qualifier and then the drop down list and choose 3D, we're essentially looking at the same exact thing. As you'll notice, we have that second window that I referenced back up in the effect. Now here's an older video that I created where you can see it in action. Obviously you come down to the qualifier, you choose 3D, and then you draw a line over the area that you want to key. In order to see it, you have to click on highlight mode and it does show a little box within that window down by the qualifier. So the nice thing about the newest version is that we have a lot more options within the 3D keyer. I may end up doing a separate video about this. So if you're interested in that, let me know and please subscribe to the channel. You'll notice as I open up all these sections, we have a lot more options. Once again, if we come down to the qualifier, you'll notice that our screen looks a little bit different. I'll click on the icon that corresponds to the 3D keyer. And as I said, we have a lot more options and we have an entirely new aesthetic. And that even includes here under our HSL qualifier. Another nice thing about this update is that it automatically updates in our viewer. So all we have to do is draw over the area and it will automatically put it into a mode where we can see what's being selected and what's not being selected. Another new addition, once again, we're going back to a previous version, is the color management screen under project settings. These are all the options that we had in previous versions of DaVinci Resolve. And just for reference, in case you didn't know, if we chose custom, then you could see all the other specifics that you can adjust. But in the newest version, they've actually made it a lot more simple. If we choose DaVinci Color Managed, and we choose automatic color management, the only options that we'll see here is SDR or HDR. And even the output color space has been simplified. You either have the Rec 709 or the Rec 2020 or the HDR Hybrid Lock Gamma or the HDR PQ. If you uncheck automatic color management, you'll be back to where you had the other options as before, but I think this helps simplify everything. Looking at an older version of Film Grain within DaVinci Resolve, and in the newest version, we have two more options. We have the option to freeze, and that could be keyframed. And then at the bottom, we have the option to animate on every refresh. So in older versions of DaVinci Resolve, we had this nice drop-down window. Within the tracker here, we have all those options. Here under the curves, we have all the different curves that we have. But if we head over to the newest version, 17.4, everything's changed to an icon. And this is nice because even though the names aren't displayed, you can hover over the icons and they'll tell you what they are. And they're also just one small click away. So you'll notice those options over on the primaries on the left-hand side. Same thing with the curves here in the middle and the same thing over on our tracker. One of the new things that they've added into DaVinci Resolve 17.4 is a new iris transition. And this one's the square transition. In the effects section, I can hover scrub so you can see a preview of it. I'll drag and replace the one that we have on the timeline already. And there's actually a second option for square point. And what that does is put the square on its side. Now I know what you might be thinking. This looks very similar to a diamond or a diamond effect, but let me quickly show you the diamond effect and why that's different. So if I hover scrub over the diamond, you'll see it's a different shape. I'm not sure how many people actually use these, but if you want to, there are your options. In previous versions of Resolve, here's what we had for options in the tracker. 
In the newest version, we actually have an additional option which tracks back and forth, which is really nice because more than likely, that's what you're going to have to end up doing, especially if you start in the middle of the clip. So it's nice that you don't have to do it manually anymore. Now I covered what halation is in another video, but this is another effect that they've added into DaVinci Resolve. I'll apply it to our footage. And if you look at the lights, you can sort of determine what it's doing. Let me scroll in a little bit and maybe it will be a little bit more obvious. This is probably not the best explanation, but it's sort of a glow effect that you saw in old film stock. I can link to some references in the description below. Now this was sort of possible in previous versions, but it involved a lot more nodes. Another new effect that they've added is the custom mixer node. And you can think of this as similar to a parallel mixer node, sort of, it just allows you a lot more fine control. If you're interested in seeing a practical example of how you would use something like this, again, let me know in the comments and please subscribe to the channel and you'll see that video as soon as it comes out. Now this addition is pretty cool. You'll notice that I have markers on my timeline. And the reason that they're there is because I acted as if they were chapter markers for YouTube. So heading over to our delivery tab, we have a preset under our render settings that says YouTube. At the bottom, we can upload directly to YouTube. Underneath the description, there's an option that says chapter from markers. And if you designated a specific color, you can choose that color here. As you saw, I chose red. So obviously I'm going to choose red here. And if I hover over these markers, you can see what I've called them. And I'm going to export this video with those markers. So if you see them in the description below, then you know it worked. In case you're wondering, by the way, how you connect to YouTube, if you come up to DaVinci Resolve and then Preferences, make sure you're on the System tab, down to Internet Accounts, and there's an option at the top that says YouTube. Obviously, from here, you go ahead and log into your YouTube account, and now you can export directly from Resolve to YouTube. As you saw, I definitely did not cover everything within the newest release. If you're interested in seeing more videos about this, definitely let me know. And as I mentioned before, I didn't really go into depth into much of these. I just wanted to show you a couple of the new additions within the newest release. Thank you for watching. If you're curious about more videos in DaVinci Resolve, check out my playlist and I will see you in the next video.